Hello, and welcome to Section 2. In this section, I'll provide an introduction to ServiceNow, as well as an introduction to development inside ServiceNow. We'll start this section by first covering some ServiceNow basics. We'll discuss important topics like releases, environments, and update sets. We'll also discuss the ServiceNow stack, or group of technologies, that comprise ServiceNow. Then we'll go over some important concepts like tables and their relationships, fields and field types inside of ServiceNow, records and reference fields. We'll then jump into ServiceNow where I'll show you how reference fields work. Once we've covered those core concepts, we'll be ready to jump into ServiceNow development where I'll provide a brief introduction. We'll then discuss when scripting is and isn't necessary. And after that, we'll discuss JavaScript and the scripting environment within ServiceNow. We'll end the section by covering background scripts, the ServiceNow Studio, and some additional resources that'll be beneficial to you. So let's get started with some basics. Note that if you've recently watched my ServiceNow 101 course, or feel like you have a solid understanding of the following topics, feel free to skip to the next video. So what is ServiceNow? Well, ServiceNow is a software as a service platform. ServiceNow uses a subscription model, so customers subscribe or purchase licenses for a given set of users. If someone at an organization says they have ServiceNow, they don't physically own the source code or have it installed somewhere. They simply have a ServiceNow subscription or a group of subscriptions. ServiceNow started in the IT service management space where it quickly grew and almost monopolized the industry. But it didn't stop there. ServiceNow currently has presence in IT service management, IT operations management, IT business management, application development, security operations, human resources, and much, much more. If you'd like to know more about what ServiceNow is capable of, I recommend visiting servicenow.com for a list of all products. So what do you get when you purchase a subscription? ServiceNow will give you an instance, which represents a few things. An instance represents a specific URL in which you access your instance through. It also represents the instance data that is stored in the hosted database servers, any application logic, and any custom components. We'll discuss the ServiceNow stack in a bit, but for now just know that ServiceNow uses a MySQL database on the back end. Due to this, Almost everything in ServiceNow is stored as a record in a table within an instance database. An incident is stored as a record in the incident table. A business rule is stored as a record in the business rules table, and so on. Whenever you hear the phrase out of box in the ServiceNow world, this refers to the state of an instance when ServiceNow first spins it up. So, what comes with the core platform, or what is loaded out of the box. A lot of ServiceNow best practices represent the idea of maintaining an instance that is as close to out of the box as possible. If you have an instance and you have tons and tons of customizations and complex things going on, it can make it much more difficult for upgrades and maintainability. Over the years, ServiceNow has made a lot of changes to their IT service management processes within the tool based on customer feedback. So if you think of it as the ServiceNow tool, such as incident problem and change, represent the industry best practice, and you want to make some complex configurations and customizations to it, then you should really be asking yourself, is my process that much different than the hundreds or even thousands of other customers out there? If ServiceNow 
and their out of the box state represents an industry best practice and follows ITIL best practices, should I be changing my process? And as a consultant, a lot of the times it's our job to provide the customer with this insight. I've seen this time and time again where a customer's complex configurations and customizations come back later only to bite them in the butt when they look to upgrade or use new tools or applications like the new service portal. So while you, the developer, is capable of creating some very complex customizations and really changing ServiceNow to do anything you want, it's not always recommended. All right, now let's talk a little bit about releases. So just like any other application you've used, ServiceNow has what they call releases to group together a number of changes to the core platform. ServiceNow is on an approximate 10 to 12 month feature release cycle. At the time of this recording, Istanbul is the current general availability release. This means that new customers will receive instances on the Istanbul release. The feature releases are named after cities around the world. So to the right is a list of past and future releases along with their release year. The ServiceNow release schedule is composed of feature releases, which contain new features and new applications, patch releases, which contain a collection of problem fixes, and finally, hot fixes, which are usually a fix to a specific problem that's implemented very, very quickly. A patch release may contain many hot fixes. Note, to check the release version of an instance, simply type stats.do followed by the enter key in the application navigator. This will bring you to a page which shows you all kinds of useful information about a given instance. Although it depends on your license contract, customers typically receive three environments from ServiceNow. They'll receive a production instance, a test instance, and a development instance. The reason for these three instances is so admins and developers can customize and develop on the platform without jeopardizing production data. Typically development is performed on the development environment. Once work is complete there, it is pushed to the test instance where users go through a user acceptance testing phase. Once testing is complete, the changes are then pushed to production. As an admin, you have the ability to clone instances. So for example, if the development instance starts to drift far from the production instance, and by that, I mean the process and configurations and customizations in the development instance are not representing the current process and configurations in the production instance, then you may request the development instance to be cloned from the production or test instance. So you would essentially be taking the mirror image of your production instance and cloning that down to development. So then development would mirror the production instance at that point in time. It's best practice to keep all instances as similar as possible, especially the test and production instances, since when you test new updates, you want to be testing those updates in an instance that is as similar to the production instance, if not identical to the production instance as possible. All right, now let's talk about update sets. So you might be asking, how do I push changes from dev to test or prod? Well, this is accomplished via update sets. Update sets are used to record most customizations and configurations. Most 
being the key word here. If you are ever in doubt, I highly recommend going to ServiceNow's documentation to verify what gets captured and what doesn't get captured. Almost everything inside of ServiceNow is stored as a record in a table. If you modify a business rule or client script, you are really modifying the business rule or client script record in their respective tables. Update sets are XML snapshots of the last record modified. So if you were modifying a business rule, the update set would just contain the most recently modified business rule record in XML format. Update sets also have versions and you can merge two or more update sets into one. If two update sets have modified the same record and you merge those two update sets, the merged update set will contain the last modified record. When you load an update set, say to a production instance, you can preview the update set before committing the update set. This will catch the majority of issues and compatibility issues if they arise. Now let's quickly discuss what's captured and not captured in update sets. Customizations like client scripts, business rules, and UI policies are captured in update sets. Tables and fields are captured. Reports and workflows are captured. And form and form modifications are captured. So, what is not captured? Well, data is not captured, such as new records in an incident table or a change table. So, new incidents, new problems, new users, new groups, all of these are not captured. New CIs are not captured in the CMDB, and schedules are not captured either. Again, if you are ever hesitant on what is captured or not, I recommend reviewing the ServiceNow documentation. Also, just because something is not captured in an update set doesn't mean that you can't still import that into another instance. There are methods like exporting the XML record and then importing the XML record into another instance. This is commonly done with groups in the instance. All right, and finally, we'll end this video by discussing the ServiceNow stack. So the ServiceNow stack, or group of technologies that comprise ServiceNow, consists of Apache Tomcat web servers, J2EE application servers, MySQL databases, and the Mozilla Rhino JavaScript engine. This is not an exhaustive list, but should give you a general understanding of the platform and the core technologies that ServiceNow is created on. The ServiceNow data centers consist of thousands of servers that take on the roles of load balancers, web servers, application servers, database servers, and much, much more. The general flow of traffic when, say, a client wants to access a specific incident would be their request goes over the internet, and finally lands in the ServiceNow data center. The first thing their request might hit is a load balancer, which determines which servers have extra resources to allocate to process this request. Once a load balancer finds an idle web server, it would then send the request to the web server. The web server would do some processing and send the request to an application server. The application server is what would do a lot of the core logic and generate the SQL to then be passed to the database server where a specific incident would be queried in the incident table. Then the database server would hand the application server that information. The application server might hand that response to the web server where it's packaged up and finally sent back through the internet to the client. Again, there's probably hundreds of technologies involved with ServiceNow since it's such a huge platform, but this group of technologies here represent the core systems used.